Starting in the new power update, players will have immediate access to destroyers with a pretty quick grind to cruisers. Larger vessels play much differently than PT boats, tanks, and planes however. There's a bit of a learning curve, which hopefully this video should help with. Keep in mind that most of this is based off the damage models and mechanics at the time of writing this. The general gist of the video should stay the same, but some of the details may change from update to update. First, it's important to look at how the aiming system works. Upon hitting your lock-on key, the ship closest to your cursor will be selected. However, the aiming system is handled differently between arcade and realistic battles. In arcade battles, the shooting distance is automatically set to be equal to the enemy's distance after a shell hits the water. In realistic battles, after a moment their distance from you will appear by the aiming reticle. The first line says what the estimated distance to the enemy is, and the second line says what vertical distance your guns are aiming at. You can manually change this distance with the scroll wheel, or whatever you have set to adjust the aiming axis. The realistic system provides a lot more direct control, and can be toggled on for arcade battles by turning on realistic aiming in the options menu. I would highly recommend doing this, as it gives more control to the player and struggles less against targets that are rapidly changing their distance from you. You can also make slight adjustments by moving the mouse up and down on the y-axis of the screen. Horizontal lead is decided by the position of your aiming cursor on the x-axis of the screen. To properly lead, there are a few things to consider. Any shells fired keep the velocity of your ship, and unless both ships are perfectly parallel, you also need to adjust for closing rates. Generally, I would recommend aiming below enemy ships slightly by around 100 to 400 meters, increasing the amount aimed beneath a target at further ranges. Most of the time players are gradually getting closer together, so under aiming will make your shells more likely to connect after their travel time. Try to keep track of where each salvo is going, and adjust your aim after seeing where they'll land, gradually correcting until shells start to consistently connect. It takes some practice, but after a bit it starts to feel natural and provides a lot of direct control to the player. Now that aiming's been covered, next comes dealing damage. How to kill an enemy ship, where to aim, and what shells to use. Each ship's hull is divided into a few segments, along with having a few components, both internal and external, that can be damaged. Each segment and component has a number of crew assigned to it, and as they're destroyed, the crew is gradually lowered. Upon hitting 0%, the ship is destroyed. Technically, the listed 0% isn't actually 0% of the crew being left, but that's a more complex topic for another time. To most effectively wipe out a ship's crew, it's best to spread shells over the whole hull, from bow to stern. Shooting the same spot repeatedly has diminishing returns, and after a hull segment turns fully black, shooting it effectively deals no damage to the enemy. With larger ships, most of the crew is contained in the middle section of the ship, which tends to also be the best armored portion of it. Components that are worth noting are the bridge, guns, and ammunition of enemy ships. Destroying the bridge of a ship removes the enemy's ability to steer until it's repaired, which can be a long time if they have other components that are also in need of repairs. Destroying the guns obviously disables that gun's ability to fire, lowering the enemy's damage output. Detonating a ship's ammunition tends to require specific shells and precise placement of them, but can deal massive damage or even one-shot an enemy ship. It's also much more relevant in cruiser battles than it is in destroyer battles. Of course, to properly damage a target, you need to use the right ammunition. In destroyers, this mostly means high explosive ammunition. The exception would be to later American destroyers, as their anti-fragmentation armor provides resistance to high explosive ammo, making semi-armor piercing ammunition a better option. Notably, HEVT ammunition has a higher fragment count than standard HE shells, meaning it actually deals more damage to surface targets, even if the shells are otherwise statistically identical. Against larger ships, armor piercing or semi-armor piercing shells tend to be the better options, as larger and better armored ships are much more resistant to high explosive shells. Whichever shell is better is on a ship to ship basis. However, as a general rule, AP is better at longer ranges, while SAP is better at shorter ranges. Now that destroying ships has been covered, how do you keep your own ship from meeting the same fate? The most important aspects of staying afloat are evasion and damage control. At longer engagement ranges, shells tend to have pretty long travel times, so you can actually turn to evade an in-air salvo of shells surprisingly easily. I would recommend looking through the ship's smoke to do this, as that actually illuminates shells better than looking at them normally. Maneuvering also throws the aim of both players off, since changing headings shifts a lot of variables like momentum and closing rate. However, the player evading knows to adjust ahead of time, while the opposing player is forced to react, generally giving the one evading a leg up. Making slight adjustments also helps with dodging torpedoes, since changing headings by just a few degrees can cause long-range torpedo salvos to miss. For fixing damage, there are three kinds of damage control actions in Naval. Repairs, 
firefighting, and unwatering. Repairs fix the broken components of a ship, such as the guns or bridge. Firefighting gets rid of fires, which gradually spread if they're left unattended, dealing damage over time. Last is unwatering, which repairs hull breaches and then pumps the water out in two separate stages. These repairs drastically slow each other down when multiple types are being used at once, so it's important to prioritize what's most important in the moment. Generally, I'd prioritize repairing first if your guns or bridge are damaged, unwatering first if you're hit with a torpedo or bomb, and firefighting first if neither of those is currently an issue. Automatic repairs can also be toggled on by pressing the key to start those repairs when they're unneeded, however this can make it difficult to turn that repair off to prioritize another, since it'll just keep restarting itself. There's also a mechanic that removes the ability to repair after getting to around 5% crew, however it tends to start closer to 10%. There's not really anything that can be done about it, and it just means that in about 2 minutes, you'll capsize with no real way to stop it. Countering aircraft is another important thing to know how to do. Some primary guns get shells like HETF and HEVT, which can airburst against aircraft, providing a powerful and direct option to take out planes at all ranges. While the AI-controlled anti-air guns can be powerful at very close range, they don't really adjust for drop, meaning that unless you want to kill trade from shooting a plane down after it's already dropped its ordnance, it's important to take manual control. By pressing Alt in 1, 2, or 3, you can take manual control of your primary, secondary, or tertiary weapons. Primary is the default, secondary tends to be higher caliber weapons, and tertiary is the smaller caliber guns on a vessel. Some vessels only have primary and secondary, however most cruisers and destroyers will have primary, secondary, and tertiary. I would recommend taking control of the tertiary weapons against close aircraft, and then using those to fill the sky with lead so that aircraft struggle to approach. It's best to aim for the cockpit of a plane, as only taking off a wing still allows them to drop their ordnance, normally resulting in both players going down. Against torpedo bombers, it's best to stay bow onto them, making it so that if a torpedo is dropped it's easier to dodge. With standard bombs, it's better to turn and dodge wildly, making it harder to get a direct hit on your ship. For tactics, it's generally down to map and personal preference. However, I can give some advice on what I would generally recommend. At the start of a match, it's best to get into a covered position, using the map's terrain to provide natural protection from enemy fire. By using cover on both your side and the enemy's side to minimize the number of visible opponents at once, you can force 1v1 engagements to minimize the amount of incoming fire. By taking out a large number of crew or disabling critical components early in a fight, you can maintain high crew counts and destroy multiple targets before going down. Deciding which country to play can also be pretty important. Each country's ships perform a bit differently, generally having some trends between ship classes. These are just general overviews of what to expect, so there are exceptions to what's being said here in each tree, however I think it gives a good idea of what to expect. Keep in mind that this doesn't cover dreadnoughts, as at the time of writing this, they haven't been introduced, meaning that I can't give accurate measures as to their performance. American destroyers have high fire rates and improved survivability due to their anti-fragmentation armor, making them the best brawlers. However, they struggle at long range due to relatively poor accuracy. Their light cruisers are similar, though their heavy cruisers tend to be particularly weak due to very poor accuracy and armor. They also have the best overall anti-air armaments of any country, both with their dual-purpose 5-inch 38 caliber cannons and numerous secondary guns. America also has the best aircraft for naval, with powerhouses like the BTD and AM-1 carrying multiple high-power, high-drop-speed torpedoes. Germany's destroyers have very accurate and consistent cannons, making them powerful at longer ranges that the guns of other countries struggle to consistently hit at. However, they have slower rotation rates on their turrets, making it difficult to rapidly react to new targets. German light and heavy cruisers tend to be pretty tanky, having either turtleback armor or the physical size to resist most weapons. Their heavy cruisers have accuracy issues, however, making them a bit inconsistent at longer ranges. Most Soviet destroyers have high damage cannons and great mobility, but the slow rotation rates of their mounts make them very slow to respond. Notably, their destroyers have powerful SAP shells, making them one of the few countries that can consistently detonate the ammo racks of other ships in destroyer battles. Their cruisers have high damage guns, and do particularly well at detonating the ammo of enemy cruisers. Next up is Great Britain, who's generally more of an all-rounder country. They don't have greatly defined strengths or weaknesses, but provide overall balanced ships. They have many destroyers at 4.0 and 4.3, giving them a very filled out lineup at the most popular destroyer battle rating. Their main weakness is having the single worst starting destroyer, the Clemson L45, which makes the initial grind up their tree very difficult. Many of their cruisers only have SAP and no form of AP, meaning that they will also struggle against heavily armored targets. 
Japan has excellent torpedoes with both their destroyers and cruisers, with their long lance torpedoes having exceptional speed, range, and damage. This also makes them proportionally better in arcade battles than in realistic battles due to having infinite torpedo reloads. Their destroyers have accurate but slow firing guns with slow rotation rates, and their later cruisers have very powerful armor piercing ammunition and high survivability. Japan also has great air support, with their torpedoes having high damage and high drop speeds. However, they have incredibly weak anti-air weaponry on their ships. Last is Italy, who's currently a weaker pick than the other countries due to having an overall slow damage output. Their cannons have very slow reloads, very weak HE shells, and subpar accuracy, both with destroyers and cruisers. Italian AP shells do tend to be pretty powerful, but poor precision and slow firing rates cancel out this strength. I generally wouldn't recommend them for new players. As for what naval tree is the best for new players in my opinion, Germany comes in at number one due to their overall good naval tree, only having one incredibly poor ship with the Graf Spee. America's a close second, having higher peaks with the Fletcher and Brooklyn, but also having lower lows with the Clemsons and Omahas being very poor introductions to destroyers and cruisers respectively. Russia is next due to having a powerful reserve destroyer and high power weapons, but is a bit harder to use due to their slow responsiveness. Great Britain comes next, having a terrible starting ship with the Clemson L45, but otherwise a very fleshed out destroyer lineup with overall good vessels throughout the whole tree. Second to last is Japan, whose reliance on torpedoes with their destroyers makes them require different playstyles to use effectively compared to the other trees here. Last is Italy, due to their ships having very low damage outputs without any strengths that truly balance that weakness out. I hope this guide was helpful. In the future I'm planning to make a guide focused more on progression, such as tree unlocks, modifications, and crew skills. I may also create more in-depth guides on some of these topics, depending on what people want to see. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more naval content.